up to 91. The header. Hope plus faith equals good works and is the formula set forth for righteousness and happiness. The reasons why people commit crimes against humanity are explained. The form of government that will be upon the earth during the millennium is introduced. The exalted shall be abased, and the abased shall be exalted. Latter-day humans are encouraged to set their governments up according to the government of heaven. 1. And now, my brothers and sisters, if there existeth hope among you in abundance, then there shall also be an exceedingly strong faith in that which hath created this hope. 2. Therefore, if it is a government that perpetuateth and giveth unto a man this hope, then this man will have faith in this government and support it, and if necessary, give his life for it. 3. And now, the governments of men are led by leaders who speak flattering words of hope unto the people. And because of their words of flattery and promises of hope, they deceive the people and manipulate them into believing that the hope that they promise the people with their flattery will come to fruition. 4. But when the hope in which the people have placed their trust is not realized, then the people do not have faith in their government and do not support it. And when the people do not support it, the government shall fail. 5. Therefore, the most important thing to a man is his hope, which bringeth to him the faith that causeth his works. 6. And now, a government that expecteth the people to support it, and trust in it, should be able to guarantee the people that for which they hope. Nevertheless, there have been no government upon the face of the earth, since the beginning of the accounted history of man, that hath given all the people that for which they hope. 7. Yea, it is true that the governments of men have provided an opportunity for the few, who are rich, and who hold power over the poor, to realize the hope that bringeth joy to them. But no government based upon the principles and precepts of men, which are given unto them according to the plan of Lucifer, can provide a hope for all of the people. 8. And because these governments have not provided this hope for all of the people, many of them do not have faith in these governments, but are forced by the power of these governments, which is held in the hands of those whose hope is fulfilled, to support the government that the rich and the powerful have established for themselves. 9. And if the majority, who are poor, do not support the government, then by the power of its force these are imprisoned or killed, thus fulfilling the words of John, which he wrote, saying, And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak, and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. 10. And when the people have lost hope in their government, then they no longer have faith in it, and their works become contrary to the principles and laws that these governments have set up. 11. Now, these are the reasons for the crimes that are committed by the poor against the rich and the governments of men. Behold, the poor have lost faith in the rich because they do not care for them, nor do they represent their causes and their needs in their governments. 12. And when they have lost the hope that their faith can be realized according to their desires of happiness, then their works seem to be evil in the eyes of the government that hath set itself up as an entity from which they should receive the desires of their faith. 13. And when their works are evil according to the government, then these that have lost hope are imprisoned for that which they do contrary to the laws of the land established by these corrupt governments. 14. And it shall come to pass that when the Lord cometh upon the earth, he shall throw down all the governments of men which have made empty promises by the flattering words of their leaders. 15. And he shall establish his government, which shall guarantee unto all the fulfillment of the hope of all their desires. And this hope is that we might be happy in the state of existence in which we have been placed by God, our Heavenly Father. 16. Therefore, in the day that he shall cast down all the governments of men, 
He shall release all the prisoners being held in all of the prisons that shall be established throughout the earth. 17. And it shall not matter to the law for what crime these have been charged or for what purpose they have been caused by their governments to be incarcerated in prisons. For all the people of the earth shall know that the new government of the Lord is a righteous government, which giveth to all equally those things which will sustain their lives and bring them happiness. 18. And when those that were once prisoners realize that they are now being led by a righteous leader, and that the government of the earth is a government set up for the sake of all of the people, and not for the sake and purpose of the rich only. Then shall these begin to have an exceedingly great faith in the government, and then they shall not be desirous to commit any crime against it. 19. And it shall come to pass that the whole earth shall be under one government, and it shall fill the entire earth with its laws and its principles. 20. And those who were chosen as leaders of the governments of men shall have their nakedness revealed unto them in that day. In other words, the whole world shall see the wickedness of the manner in which they led the people and held power in their governments. 21. And none of these shall receive the honor and respect that they once received among men. And all the leaders of the governments throughout the history of the earth shall lose the respect and adoration of the people of the earth, and their names and their works shall not be known again throughout the earth. 22. And then shall the words of the Lord be fulfilled when he said, He who is exalted shall be abased, and he who is abased shall be exalted. 23. Behold, in the day of the reign of the Lord, the works of men shall be discovered for what they are, yea, the whole world shall know that every government set up among the children of men since the days of Adam were governments which followed the plan of Lucifer and exalted the rich and powerful and abased the poor and the meek and the humble among men. 24. And now, it is for this reason which I knew before I started this abridgment of the record of the brother of Jared, that I have not included in this record the names of any of the leaders of the governments of men which have lived upon the earth, except it be those who have been wrought upon by the Lord, or used by him, to do his will for the people, even those elect who honoured the Lord and obeyed his commandments. 25. Therefore, all ye leaders of the governments of men who shall receive these things, yea, even all ye who have given great accolades to the leaders of your governments and your nations, which ye thought were righteous and noble men among you, behold, I say unto all of you that ye are wicked men, and did nothing to perpetuate the plan of the Father upon the earth. 26. Yea, ye have led the rich and those whose hope was satisfied by you, but the poor, and the needy, the widow, and the orphan, and those who are imprisoned, ye did nothing for, except it be that ye fed them from the scraps that fell from your tables. 27. And the honour and glory that ye received from men shall be as the sand that bloweth off the palm tree in the desert. Yea, the sand covereth the palm, so that the glory of its life is hidden from view, and the wind bloweth off the sand, revealing the glory and beauty of the tree. 28. But the sand that covered up the tree is cast among the rest of the grains of sand, which is plentiful, and of which there is no distinction, all grains being equal one to another. 29. For in the day of the Lord, no man who hath received glory and honour of men shall maintain that same glory in that day. 30. And the Lord shall call forth those whom he hath chosen to be the leaders of his government, which is the government that supporteth the plan of the Father. And when the people of the world shall behold those whom he calleth forth from among them to be the leaders of his government, they shall be astonished at those whom he shall ordain to this power and authority. 31. And then shall the words of the prophets be fulfilled when they prophesied, saying, The weak things of the world shall come forth and break down the mighty and strong ones, that man should not counsel his fellow man, 
neither trust in the arm of flesh, but that every man might speak in the name of God the Lord, even the Saviour of the world. 32. For there shall be some called from among the poor, who are cast out by the rich and their governments, and there shall be some called who have been imprisoned by the governments of men. 33. Behold, then he shall call forth those who shall be the principal leaders over the people of the whole earth. And these are many of the prophets who have been cast out and slain by the governments and the religions of men which existed upon the earth since the beginning. 34. And then shall the leaders of the governments and religions of men look upon the leaders whom the Lord hath chosen from among them. And they shall say of them like was said of the apostles of the Lord, which is written, saying, Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled. 35. And there shall be great torment among the prideful, and the rich, and the learned, and those who once held a position of power over the children of men. For these shall know that they are nothing in the sight of God, but that the Lord hath exalted those who were once abased by them. 36. And he shall exalt these that were once perceived as unlearned, and ignorant, and weak among men, and he shall give them power over the rich, and the prideful, and those who held honour and glory among the kingdoms and nations of the earth. 37. And at that day the Lord shall cause that there shall be no body hair upon the face, or the bodies of those who have not been ordained by him to have power over the people. And by this shall the people know that a man hath been chosen by God to lead the people. 38. Behold, only those men who can grow a beard, and who have body hair shall be those who have been chosen by the Lord to lead the people. And in this way there shall be no more deception among the people of the earth, as to who is a leader, and doeth the will of the Father, and who is not. 39. Behold, at that day the Lord shall establish his government, and his laws, and call forth those who shall be in different parts of the world to govern under his authority. And because they shall have a beard, then shall the people know that they have been chosen by God to serve them, and lead them in the plan of the Father. 40. And the Lord shall not allow a wicked man to wear a beard, nor shall a wicked man be capable of growing one by nature. 41. And these leaders who are called by the Lord shall set up the kingdom of God according to the things which they shall be taught by the Lord. 42. And it shall come to pass that the entire world shall be ruled under one government, even a new world order of government which shall be led by the Lord. And there shall be no bureaucracy in the government of the Lord, for there shall be no need for one man to tell another that which he should do. For all shall be taught the law of the Father, which shall be a universal law that all shall obey. 43. And the reasons why all shall obey this law is because it is a righteous law which was given unto the people by the Lord, who shall come to the earth in all the glory and power of the Father. 44. And the people shall know that his law is a righteous law, because it guaranteeth unto them the fulfilment of their hopes of peace and happiness. 45. And because the people know that it fulfilleth their hopes, then they have exceeding faith in this law, and their faith shall bring forth works which are meet for this law. 46. And if it is a righteous law, then it shall bring forth righteous works, and from the righteous works of all the people of the earth shall peace and happiness reign upon it. 47. And now I would that ye should understand something more concerning the day of the Lord. For I know that there shall be many of you who think that when the Lord cometh in the glory of the Father, that all the wicked shall be destroyed. And this ye believe, because ye are taught the precepts of men and do not understand the plan of the Father concerning his children. 48. Behold, it was given unto you in an allegory concerning these things that shall come to pass in the day of the Lord by the prophet Zenos, when he spoke, saying, 
And it came to pass that the Lord of the vineyard said unto the servant, Let us go to, and hew down the trees of the vineyard, and cast them into the fire, that they shall not cumber the ground of my vineyard, for I have done all. What could I have done more for my vineyard? 49. And now, my beloved brothers and sisters, I, Moroni, have received the commandment of the Lord, that I should give unto you an explanation of this parable that Zenos used to teach the people, the things that were to come to pass pertaining to the kingdom of God upon the earth. 50. Therefore, I shall give unto you the meaning of all of these things according to the Holy Spirit which is in me. For behold, after the gospel shall be given unto the Gentiles in the latter days, even through Joseph, the first of these last two prophets of God, the church that he shall set up upon the seat of the beast of the latter days shall become exceedingly prideful and shall fulfill the words of Zenos when he said, 51. And it came to pass that the servant said unto his master, And now, behold, notwithstanding all the care which we have taken of my vineyard, the trees thereof have become corrupted, that they bring forth no good fruit, and these I had hoped to preserve to have laid up fruit thereof against the season unto mine own self. 52. But, behold, they have become like unto the wild olive tree, and they are of no worth but to be hewn down and cast into the fire, and it grieveth me that I should lose them. But what could I have done more in my vineyard? Have I slackened mine hand, that I have not nourished it? Nay, I have nourished it, and I have digged about it and I have pruned it, and I have dunged it, and I have stretched forth mine hand almost all the day long, and the end draweth nigh. 53. And it grieveth me that I should hewn down all the trees of my vineyard, and cast them into the fire that they should be burned. Who is it that hath corrupted my vineyard? 54. And it came to pass that the servant said unto his master, Is it not the loftiness of thy vineyard, have not the branches thereof overcome the roots which are good? And because the branches have overcome the roots thereof, behold, they grow faster than the strength of the roots, taking strength unto themselves. Behold, I say, is not this the cause that the trees of thy vineyard have become corrupted? 55. And now, this Zenos said concerning the church that shall rise up in the latter days and take upon itself the name of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Behold, these are they who have preserved the root of the tree, which is the true gospel of Jesus Christ. 56. And this they have preserved in the pride of their hearts. For they have the record of my Father in which is given the fullness of the gospel, and all the words of Christ, and they also have the words of the Bible, which proceedeth forth from the mouth of the Jew. 57. And this former testifieth of the latter, giving testimony to the whole world of the truthfulness of the gospel of Jesus Christ, which are the words which he gave unto the Jews first, and then unto my fathers, who were the Nephites in the land of Bountiful. 58. And this great church of the latter days hath preserved the roots of the gospel, but the branches of the tree, which are the leaders, and the members of this church, have taken strength unto themselves, in the pride and arrogance that they show forth because of the true gospel which they have among them. 59. And because they have taken strength unto themselves, the fruit which these branches bear is a corrupted and an evil fruit, which the Lord hateth. 60. For behold, it is the position and authority of Jehovah to prepare the world for the Father, and teach the people the will of the Father in all things. In other words, it is his commission from the Father to prepare the vineyard that it might bring forth righteous fruit. 61. And after the Gentiles shall corrupt the work of the Lord, yea, even after much patience and mercy hath been shown unto them by the Lord, then shall the Lord be dismayed in his efforts to fulfill the will of the Father in all things, which he was commanded by the Father in the beginning concerning the children of God that pertain unto this earth. 62. And when the Lord showed forth his dismay at the great wickedness of the children of men, 
he called forth all of his holy prophets, even all those who had been upon the earth, and counseled with them. 63. And at the time that he shall call together all those who have been called to the office of a prophet, there shall only be one of them, who hath been called of God to perform the labours of a prophet of God, left upon the earth. 64. And this shall be Christopher, the last of the two latter-day prophets that shall be among you. And the Lord shall call forth his prophets, all of whom shall be resurrected at this time, and residing in the kingdom of the Father, except it be for the last of them, who shall be still upon the earth among you. 65. And the Lord shall counsel with them about that which they should do in order to complete the will of the Father concerning this world. 66. And the Lord knew that the time of the end was near, and that it was expedient that the will of the Father be completed according to the timetable that the Father had set down in the beginning. 67. Therefore, the Lord was saddened that it should be necessary to hewn down all the trees of his vineyard, and cast them into the fire that they should be burned. 68. And the words of Zenos continue, saying, but, behold, the servant said unto the Lord of the vineyard, Spare it a little longer. And the Lord said, Yea, I will spare it a little longer. For it grieveth me that I should lose the trees of my vineyard. Therefore, let us take of the branches of these which I have planted in the nethermost parts of my vineyard, and let us graft them into the tree from whence they came. And let us pluck from the tree those branches whose fruit is most bitter and graft in the natural branches of the tree in the stead thereof. 69. And this will I do that the tree may not perish, that perhaps I may preserve unto myself the roots thereof for mine own purpose. And behold, the roots of the natural branches of the tree which I planted whithersoever I would are yet alive. Therefore, that I may preserve them also for mine own purpose. I will take of the branches of this tree, and I will graft them in unto them. 70. Yea, I will graft in unto them the branches of their mother tree, that I may preserve the roots also unto mine own self, that when they shall be sufficiently strong, perhaps they may bring forth good fruit unto me, and I may yet have glory in the fruit of my vineyard. 71. And it came to pass that they took from the natural tree which had become wild, and grafted in unto the natural trees, which also had become wild. And they also took of the natural trees which had become wild, and grafted into their mother tree. 72. And the Lord of the vineyard said unto the servant, Pluck not the wild branches from the trees, save it be those which are most bitter, and in them ye shall graft according to that which I have said. And we will nourish again the trees of the vineyard, and we will trim up the branches thereof, and we will pluck from the trees those branches which are ripened, that must perish, and cast them into the fire. 73. And this I do that, perhaps, the roots thereof may take strength because of their goodness, and because of the change of the branches, that the good may overcome the evil. 74. And because that I have preserved the natural branches, and the roots thereof, and that I have grafted in the natural branches again into their mother tree, and have preserved the roots of their mother tree, that perhaps the trees of my vineyard may bring forth again good fruit, and that I may have joy again in the fruit of my vineyard, and perhaps that I may rejoice exceedingly that I have preserved the roots and the branches of the first fruit. 75. Therefore, go to, and call servants, that we may labor diligently with our might in the vineyard, that we may prepare the way, that I may bring forth again the natural fruit, which natural fruit is good, and the most precious above all other fruit. 76. Therefore, let us go to, and labor with our might this last time, for behold, the end draweth nigh, and this is for the last time that I shall prune my vineyard. Graft in the branches, begin at the last that they may be first, and that the first may be last, and dig about the trees, both old and young, the first and the last, and the last and the first, that all may be nourished once again for the last time. 77. 
Therefore, dig about them, and prune them, and dung them once more, for the last time, for the end draweth nigh. And if it so be that these last grafts shall grow, and bring forth the natural fruit, then shall ye prepare the way for them, that they may grow. 78. And as they begin to grow, ye shall clear away the branches which bring forth bitter fruit, according to the strength of the good, and the size thereof. And ye shall not clear away the bad thereof all at once, lest the roots thereof should be too strong for the graft, and the graft thereof shall perish, and I lose the trees of my vineyard. 79. For it grieveth me that I should lose the trees of my vineyard, therefore ye shall clear away the bad according as the good shall grow, that the root and the top may be equal in strength, until the good shall overcome the bad, and the bad be hewn down, and cast into the fire, that they cumber not the ground of my vineyard, and thus will I sweep away the bad out of my vineyard. 80. And the branches of the natural tree will I graft in again into the natural tree. And the branches of the natural tree will I graft into the natural branches of the tree. And thus will I bring them together again, that they shall bring forth the natural fruit, and they shall be one. 81. And the bad shall be cast away, yea, even out of all the land of my vineyard. For behold, only this once will I prune my vineyard. 82. And it came to pass that the Lord of the vineyard sent his servant. And the servant went and did as the Lord had commanded him, and brought other servants, and they were few. 83. And the Lord of the vineyard said unto them, Go to, and labor in the vineyard with your might. For behold, this is the last time that I shall nourish my vineyard, for the end is nigh at hand, and the season speedily cometh. And if ye labour with your might with me, ye shall have joy in the fruit which I shall lay up unto myself against the time which will soon come. 84. And it came to pass that the servants did go, and labour with their might, and the Lord of the vineyard laboured also with them, and they did obey the commandments of the Lord of the vineyard in all things. 85. And now, my brothers and sisters, these words of Zenos shall not come to pass until the Lord cometh in the glory of the Father, to labor with the servants whom he shall call forth, to help him teach the gospel throughout the world. And these are those whom I have mentioned who shall have facial hair, and be known as the servants of the Lord, and the leaders of the nations of the world. 86. And all of the wicked shall not be destroyed at his coming, for they are the bad fruit which shall be allowed to stay upon the earth, and shall be removed as the good shall grow. 87. For behold, the wicked of the earth shall be taught the gospel of Christ according to their ability to understand it, and abide by its precepts. But as righteousness beginneth to sweep the earth, the wicked will no longer remain thereon having been taught the gospel, and been overcome by its power. 88. And the rest of the words of Zenos shall come to pass, which he spoke, saying, And there began to be the natural fruit again in the vineyard, and the natural branches began to grow, and thrive exceedingly, and the wild branches began to be plucked off, and to be cast away, and they did keep the root, and the top thereof equal, according to the strength thereof. 89. And thus they laboured with all diligence, according to the commandments of the Lord of the vineyard, even until the bad had been cast away out of the vineyard, and the Lord had preserved unto himself that the trees had become again the natural fruit, and they became like unto one body, and the fruits were equal, and the Lord of the vineyard had preserved unto himself the natural fruit, which was most precious unto him from the beginning. 90. And it came to pass that when the Lord of the vineyard saw that his fruit was good, and that his vineyard was no more corrupt, he called up his servants, and said unto them, Behold, for this last time have we nourished my vineyard. And thou beholdest that I have done according to my will, and I have preserved the natural fruit that is good, even like as it was in the beginning. 91. And blessed art thou, for because ye have been diligent in labouring with me in my vineyard, and have kept my commandments, and have brought unto me again the natural fruit, that my vineyard is no more corrupted, 
and the bad is cast away. Behold, ye shall have joy with me because of the fruit of my vineyard. 92. For behold, for a long time will I lay up the fruit of my vineyard unto mine own self against the season, which speedily cometh. And for the last time have I nourished my vineyard, and pruned it, and dug about it, and dunged it. Therefore I will lay up unto mine own self of the fruit for a long time, according to that which I have spoken. 93. And when the time cometh that evil fruit shall again come into my vineyard, then will I cause the good and the bad to be gathered, and the good will I preserve unto myself, and the bad will I cast away into its own place. And then cometh the season and the end, and my vineyard will I cause to be burned with fire. 94. And now, my beloved brothers and sisters, there are few parables as powerful as the words which Zenos spake unto the leaders of the Jews at Jerusalem, and all of his words shall come to pass. 95. And the Lord shall set up his government when he cometh to rule and reign upon the earth, and he shall labor side by side with the prophets who have died and have been resurrected to come forth in that day and labor with him in his vineyard. 96. And now, I have something more to say unto you regarding the government of the Lord, which shall be established at the beginning of the last thousand years, or after the end of the half of times, as it has been explained unto you. 97. Behold, this government shall be established according to the principles and laws of a righteous government which I have already given unto you, and explained in this record. Nevertheless, so that it might be possible that the Lord shall cut his work short in righteousness and come down among you and begin his reign here upon the earth before the appointed time of the Father. It is expedient in the hope that I have for the governments of the latter days that I give unto you again these eternal principles that ye of the latter days might use to demand these things from the leaders whom ye shall choose to serve you. 98. Behold, I wrote unto you already, saying, And there existeth only one pure form of government that hath always existed, and shall continue to exist in worlds without end. And it is this form of government that ye should demand of your politicians and the leaders of all the nations of the earth. 99. For this is the form of government that the Lord shall establish upon the earth when he cometh in the glory of the Father. For it is the government of the Father which is in heaven. 100. And this government hath one purpose and priority, in which are incorporated all the eternal laws that manage this government and cause it to function for the purpose for which it existeth. And that purpose for which it should exist upon the earth in mortality is for the temporal happiness of those whom it serveth. 101. And the first principle and law of this government is that this government shall never be self-serving, or in other words, it shall never act in and of itself and of its own accord for the sake of its own existence. 102. And this government should be restricted in its power according to the restrictions that are necessary to ensure that it abideth by this first principle and law. 103. And this government should serve those who benefit from its existence. And those who benefit from its existence are those who give it the power that it hath received. And the power that it hath received have been given to this government to serve those who have given it its power. 104. And this government should assure each of us the happiness that each of us desireth according to each of our individual desires of happiness. 105. And the second principle and law of this eternal government is that it will guarantee the freedom or the free agency of all those whom it serveth. 106. And this free agency that it guaranteeth restricteth those that it serveth from infringing upon the free agency of another, or from having another infringe on the free agency that each of those it serveth possesseth. 107. And this government will do nothing that infringes upon the free agency of those whom it serveth, except in defending the free agency of another from being infringed upon. 108. 
And the third principle and law of this eternal government is that it shall provide the means whereby those whom it serveth may have an equal opportunity to experience the happiness that they desire. 109. And because it was not the choice of those whom it serveth to exist, this government must provide those things that are necessary to fulfill the measure and purpose of their creation, which purpose is their individual happiness. 110. And this government should not compel any to use those things which it hath provided for its people so that they might find the happiness that they desire. For if this government were to compel the people in any of these things, then it would break the second law that governeth it by taking away their free agency. 111. And these are the three main principles and laws of a righteous and just government. And these principles and laws of government should exist to serve those who have established this government. And they should exist to assure the freedom of those whom this government serveth and they should exist to provide equality for all those whom this government serveth. 112. And I have explained unto you previously that under these three main principles and laws are sub-laws and sub-principles which should be set forth to assure the adherence to these three main laws. 113. And I wrote unto you more concerning these things, saying, And this same government which is in heaven hath been explained, and given unto the children of men through the prophets of God who have lived among them, and also from the ministrations of the Holy Ghost. 114. And the prophets have instructed the children of men to pattern their governments after the government which is in heaven, even the eternal government that assureth peace and order in all the eternal worlds that exist, which worlds are without end. 115. And according to the words of the brother of Jared, yea, even according to the words of my ancestors, and also according to my own experience, when the children of men attempt to pattern their governments after the pattern that hath been revealed unto them, then peace existeth upon the earth. 116. But if they stray from the pattern that hath been shown unto them, then there are wars, and chaos, and famine, and all types of destruction among them. 117. And the reason why they stray from the pattern shown unto them is because they reject the words of the holy prophets, or they offend the Spirit, in that it withdraweth itself from them. And when the Spirit withdraweth from them, then they shall have no ministrations to teach them the proper way that a government should work. 118. And when this pure form of government hath been established among them by those in authority, even those who have listened to the voice of the prophets, or who have the Holy Ghost as their constant guide, then peace and prosperity reign among them, even so much that there existeth no poor or needy among them. 119. And now, this shall be the state of the government during the time that the Lord shall reign upon the earth. And because of this form of government, there shall be no rich and poor, bond and free, but all shall be made free, and partakers of the heavenly gift. 120. Behold, my brothers and sisters of the latter days, I say unto you, always retain within you this hope of a government that patterneth itself after these principles. 121. And if ye have this hope, then ye can strive to establish this form of government among you. 122. And if ye cannot establish this form of government among you, because of the power and the wickedness of your leaders who depend on their own wisdom and the flesh of their own arm, and cast out the holy prophets, giving no attention to their words, and who seek after gold and silver and all the vain things of the earth, yea, then ye must wait upon the Lord, and in the power and glory of the Father shall the purpose of your hope be fulfilled, and the patience and faith of the saints shall be revealed. End of chapter 91